This video is about energy in some plummeting motion. So we're going to look at the different forms of energy that are involved in a system that's uh, undergoing simple harmonic motion. And then we're going to look at some graphs to see if we can talk about the um, amount of the different forms of energy at different points during the oscillation. So if we just start with our two classic examples of simple harmonic motion, harmonic motion a pendulum and a mass on a spring. If you look at this, when the um, pendulum's at the bottom of the swing, all of the energy is kinetic. And when it's at the sides, at the uh, amplitude, all of the energy is gravitational potential. Okay, so this is just a simple energy conversion between gravitational potential energy up here, kinetic down here. Okay, the mass on the spring is a little bit more complicated because, um, again, we've got kinetic energy at the center. When it's at the ends, we've got potential energy, but that potential energy is in two different forms. So at the bottom, it's all in the form of um, elastic potential energy. At the top, it's in the form of gravitational potential energy. Okay, in the middle, it's a bit complicated because it's got some elastic potential, some gravitational potential compared to the bottom at least, and maximum kinetic. Okay, so a bit more complicated what's going on in the spring. Um, but the crucial thing for us to understand is that the total energy of the system is constant. Okay, if there's just one thing you get in from the whole, the whole of this is that the energy is just being converted from one point to another. As long as we uh, forget about any energy going out of the system, the total energy in the system stays the same. And there's always a conversion between potential energy, which is going to be at the ends of the oscillation, and kinetic energy, which is always going to be greatest in the center because that's when the object would move in fastest. Okay, in terms of these energies, at the top of the swing, the energy is... Um, or potential, gravitational potential at the bottom of the swing, it's all kinetic. At some other point, it's a mixture of those two, but it's still adding up to the same amount. In terms of the mass spring system at the top, gravitational potential at the center, maximum kinetic, but some elastic potential. At the bottom, minimum gravitational potential, but maximum elastic potential, and no kinetic. Okay, at some other point, whatever, the, whatever it adds up to, um, those different forms, okay, the total stays the same, okay, but it'll be some mixture of, in this case, some potential energy, some kinetic energy, okay, but that potential energy in this one is split into um, gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy, okay, in this one, there's only gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay, this is just one specific example of this. Um, you don't need to worry about the details too much. But the thing to understand is if you've got a mass in between two springs, then there'll be um, a force, and that force is pulling it back towards the center. Okay, So if our center of oscillation is here, there's a force from this spring. Well, we know from unit two that the force of a spring is K delta L. Okay, So if we imagine that spring's already stretched by delta L at the equilibrium position, it's now stretched by an extra amount x. So the force in this direction is k delta l plus x. Okay, on the other side, then um, the force in this direction, I'm going to just change color so you can see a bit clearer. On this side, we've got k delta l minus x. Okay, the resultant force is those two forces added together in a vector sense. And if we add those two together, what we're going to get it, um, to is minus 2kx. So is this doing simple harmonic motion as if it was just one spring that we've talked about before? So if acceleration is force divided by mass, here's the force 2kx. Okay, divide that by the mass. If I take the m out and put the x at the end, I get minus 2k over m times x. Okay, notice that this is a constant for the system and of course our definition of simple harmonic motion that we keep coming back to, a is proportional to minus x. Okay, so we've shown it's simple harmonic motion. Okay, we can move on from that to say that we also know that constant of proportionality, okay, because we know that a equals minus 2 pi f all squared times x. So the 2 pi f all squared must be equal to this 2k over m. Okay, that's what I've done here. So this gives me a formula for the frequency. If I just do a little bit of algebra on that, 
I end it with f equals 1 over pi times the square root of k over 2m. Okay, don't worry about any of that too much, but this is just proving that this does do simple harmonic motion, and we have got a formula for the frequency related to the spring constant and the mass. Okay, to calculate the energy, well, we know that when it's a distance x to the right, then the spring has got energy. Again, remember the energy formula from unit 2, a half k delta L squared. Well, we've now got delta L plus an extra bit x. Okay, the right spring, of course, has got less. So you might imagine in this system, if you're um, if you're not being very careful, you might imagine that the total energy here is zero because it might seem that that plus that would equal zero because you've got a plus x and a minus x, but that's not true. I can try and show you this graphically remember here's the um, force against extension for a spring remember the energy underneath that spring underneath that graph sorry is the um, energy stored in the spring well if I take one spring and I stretch it an extra distance here x I store this extra energy in it but if I take the other spring let me just change color again if I take the x the other spring and I make it a distance x shorter the energy that that spring loses is only that bit there clearly i've put more energy in than i've got out so the, the further away it is from the equilibrium position here the more energy is stored in the terms of the potential energy so at any point in the system the total energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy all right and at this displacement x the total energy is the potential energy here okay plus the kinetic energy Okay, that's a bit complicated, but we know one particular case here where we pull the distance a to the right. Okay, because if x equals a, right, then uh, the x becomes a, but we know that it stops at the half mv squared becomes zero. So the total energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Okay, the potential energy is k delta l squared plus a squared, which is this, but the kinetic energy is zero. Okay, so if we know the total energy at the end of the oscillation, the key thing to understand here is that we know the total energy everywhere because the total energy everywhere stays the same. Okay, so here's our maximum displacement when x equals a. Okay, here's a general formula. Okay, so, but we know the total energy is constant. So if the total energy is constant, then... Um, Here's our maximum energy where all the energy is um, potential energy at the end. Here's our general formula for the energy everywhere else. Okay, first thing to notice there is the k delta l's will cancel out. And then we're left with k a squared equals k x squared plus a half m v squared. Okay, which gives us an equation for the kinetic energy, a half m v squared, which gives us an equation for the velocity at some point. So from this we can do um, an experiment. So we've got a formula for the velocity at any point, which is minus 2k over m x squared plus 2k, m, 2k over m a squared. Notice this, this part is a constant. This isn't depending on x, but this is a variable. So we set up a um, vehicle on the air track tethered with two springs, which aren't drawn here. The vehicle oscillates, and we measure its um, velocity at different displacements x within the oscillation. We applied a graph of v squared against x squared, find the gradient and intercept, okay? Hopefully you can see from this that um, if we plot v squared against x squared, we get a gradient of 2k over m minus 2k over m, and we get an intercept of 2k over m times a squared. Okay, so we can get to a graph for all this. So here's a simplified diagram. This is just um, an object oscillating. Here's the center of the oscillation. So it's got an amplitude of 5 meters, it's got a period of 2 seconds, so 1,001, 1,002 to get back, so 2 seconds. I've just given it a mass of 2 kilograms. Use the velocity equation to calculate the velocity at different points. Well, remember the velocity equation is V equals 2 pi F uh, times the square root of A squared minus X squared. Okay, so we can get the velocity at those different points, and then we can work out the kinetic energy. Okay, just let me go down here so you can see. But the kinetic energy is a half mv squared, so that's a half m times this expression squared. Well, this expression squared is 2 pi f all squared times a squared minus x squared. 
If you look at this, the a squared is a constant, so you could multiply all that out and you get a constant, then minus x squared. So if you were to plot that graph in maths, it would be a parabola because it's x squared, but an inverted parabola because it's minus x squared. So the graph of kinetic energy against displacement would look like that. Okay, this is e k against um, x with our maximum value here of a. Okay, if the potent if the kinetic energy, sorry, looks like that, all right, then what must the potential energy look like? Well, if I change colour, we said that the total energy remains constant. So the all of the energy is potential energy at the ends here and here, and the total energy. is just a constant. Okay, so here's a crucial graph, here's a tidy version of it. Okay, a slightly different colour scheme, sorry about that. Okay, so our kinetic energy in blue here is maximum at the centre, obviously, because the, that's where it's going fastest. It's zero at the ends, obviously, because that's where it stops, but it's this parabola shape. The potential energy goes the opposite way because the total energy, the red line here, is constant. Okay, This is just an energy conversion between one form and the other. The only slight confusion in this is if you think about the mass spring system, it doesn't have a zero here of potential energy at the center. There's still some potential energy. Okay, So if you allow for that sort of system, then what you would get is a graph which was the same shape, but the potential energy whoops, went maybe something like this. Okay, if the potential energy goes like that, the kinetic energy will always go down to the axis because it will always stop at the ends. So the potential energy might be that kind of shape. And then the total energy, again, is just the two lines added together, so the total energy still goes across the top. Okay, so it might not go down to the um, origin. It might have zero potential energy in the middle. The pendulum, for example, would have zero potential energy there, but the mass spring system wouldn't. Okay, but again, for the... Last time, the most crucial thing is that at any point, the energy here plus the energy here adds up to the same total at the top. Okay, that's true all the way across the graph.